Warning: Sodium carbonate can be corrosive. Copper tube sulfate can be irritating. Handle them with great care. Copper run oxide is a red solid used as a pigment and fungicide. Actually, I have no planned use for copper one oxide. I just want to try making some copper one compounds for fun. Also, I know little about copper one compounds, so I want to make some so that I can study their properties later. As I know really little about copper one compounds, the method I used might not be the most efficient one. Again, I'm just making it for fun. To make copper one oxide, I'm going to reduce copper two citrate with sugar. The reaction involved is basically the same in the positive results of Benedict's test, which is a test for reducing sugar. Okay, here are all the ingredients I used, from left to right. We have copper 2 sulfate, citric acid, sodium carbonate, and some regular white sugar. First, dissolve 50 grams of copper 2 sulfate in roughly 100 cc of water. I heated and stirred the solution so as to speed up the dissociation. While waiting for it to dissolve, I prepared some citric acid solution in another beaker. This was done by dissolving 30 grams of citric acid monohydrate in about 20 cc of water. I also heated the solution on the same heater to speed things up. Then. Dissolve some sodium carbonate in some water in another beaker. The quantity is not very important, but I think I used about 70 grams of anhydrous sodium carbonate in total. But this was probably way too much as you can see later in this video. It seems that the carbonate is not going to fully dissolve, but it shouldn't matter. Then prepare some reducing sugar solution. In this case, I dissolved about 100 grams of sugar in 150 cc of water. This is actually a huge excess, but sugar is very cheap, and extra sugar won't hurt the reaction at all. Table sugar isn't really a reducing sugar, so to make some, a bit of citric acid crystals were added to the solution. I added about 3 grams in total. Then, heat up the solution and let it boil for about 5 to 10 minutes. Table sugar is actually pure sucrose, which consists of two parts, the glucose on the left and fructose on the right. They are linked together by an ether bond called glycosidic bond. While fructose and glucose are reducing sugars, the glycosidic bond actually makes sucrose not a reducing sugar. The citric acid we added acts as a catalyst for the hydrolysis of sucrose. When a sucrose molecule undergoes hydrolysis, its glycosidic bond breaks and a glucose molecule and a fructose molecule are formed, which can be used as an active reducing sugar. The hydrolysis is really slow under normal conditions that solutions of sucrose can sit for years with negligible change. However, in high temperatures and low pH, the hydrolysis can be speeded up and the reaction will proceed very rapidly. Okay, while it is boiling, let's get back to the copper and carbonate solutions. Add the sodium carbonate solution to the copper 2 sulfate solution slowly. As you can see, a lot of gas is formed. Sometimes the gas can even cause the solution to overflow. So remember not to add the solution too fast. As more and more sodium carbonate solution is added, the blue solution starts turning darker and darker. At this point, you should stop adding the carbonate solution or precipitate will start to form. I actually added all of my carbonate solution and I ended up adding citric acid back to the beaker to dissolve the basic precipitate again. That's why I said that 70 grams of anhydrous sodium carbonate was way too much. 50 grams is probably enough. What happens there is that when sodium carbonate reacts with acidic copper 2 sulfate and citric acid, carbon dioxide is given off as a gas. The copper 2 ions complexes with citrate to dissolve in the basic solution, contributing to the deep blue color of the solution. Then, add the hot reducing sugar solution to the deep blue solution. Then, continue heating the solution and wait for the formation of red copper 1 oxide. The color of the solution should slowly turn from deep blue to green and then to yellow and red. As you can see at this shot, 
The upper part of the solution is relatively blue and the lower part has already turned reddish orange. After about 5 minutes, the solution has turned completely red. I decided to continue heating the solution for another 10 minutes to really make sure that all copper 2 ions had been reduced to copper 1 oxide. But I stopped when the solution starts boiling as the sugars in the solution started decomposing due to the high temperature. Then, a vacuum filtration was carried out to separate the red copper oxide from the mixture. I'm very sorry that the video is shaking because of my vacuum pump. As you can see, the filtrate is tainted orange. I'm not very sure why, maybe it is due to the decomposed sugar. After all the solution has been filtered through, I used some distilled water to wash the copper 1 oxide a bit to remove any of the soluble impurities like sodium, citrate, carbonate ions and sugar. Then, I left the vacuum on for a while to drive off as much water as possible. After that, I placed my copper one oxide into a vacuum desiccator to further dry my product. Unfortunately, since I was super busy in the week after doing the synthesis, my copper one oxide oxidized and turned from dark red to black. Anyway, the mass of the blackish oxides is 14.5 grams, while the theoretical yield is 14.3 grams based on the amount of copper two sulfate used. The number is actually meaningless as the oxide has absorbed oxygen from the air and has gained weight. However, judging by the color of the filtrate, I believe that all of the copper 2 ions had been reduced. Also, even if all copper 1 oxide has oxidized to copper 2 oxide, the theoretical yield is 15.9 grams, so the yield is at least 90%. Like I said, I'm going to study some of the properties of copper 1 salts in the future. But before I do that, I need to make the oxide again and store that better. So I think that's pretty much all for today. If you have any suggestions for what I should film in the future, please leave a comment below. I would definitely love to see that. If you love this video and want to support continuous chemistry videos like this one, remember to subscribe to this channel.